I've always had a knack for seeing what's coming. Goes of my line of work, inspecting a dam or a bridge, you're looking for signs of failure years in advance. The bridge we were headed to, remote part of West Papua, that could wait 10 years for another experienced engineer. But I don't foresee everything. Thirsty. Been sleeping on these fan-like leaves the past few weeks. I'll take it with me. The fruit tempts me. Plump berries, heavy on the branches of the shrub. We tried them, of course. Grown drunk on them. They had that effect. Lowered inhibitions. Had us all giggling, dancing. But they did nothing to ease our hunger, only made it worse. The trunk of the tree fern is wrapped in brown, hair-like fibers. I tear away a handful of the dry threads. There's not much left of the engine, just one steel prop blade hanging on by a bolt. I'd need appropriate tools to get it off. Without this outflow drain, the dam could never hold the massive pressure that would build above it. I ensured we built it strong, but rubble and recycled plane wreckage is no substitute for reinforced concrete. Plus, it makes a convenient drinking fountain. Cheers! Aha! My pizza is here! I spear the fish on my second attempt. I'm getting better at this! Was that? No time for that! Unbelieving, I stare at the ship chugging slowly across the horizon. There's a lump in my throat, as for the first time in weeks, the hope of rescue is rekindled. But they won't see me! The fire! Oh God, the fire is out! I have to get it lit! They must see me! It's out! I peer closer. Some embers still glow faintly. I need some tinder to get it started. I nest the fibers in amongst the dying coals. I fan the spark until it catches, and soon the fire is roaring again. I look up at the eerie harmonic howl. One of those strange wild dogs. You're welcome to that fish, my friend. As long as this boat sees my fire, I should be. The dog is on me in an instant. Rancid breath hot on my face as I struggle to keep its snapping teeth from my throat. With my free hand, I hold the branch into the fire until it catches. I drive the flaming brand into the beast's face. As it leaps back with a snarl, I hear that terrible howling all around me. I swing the branch around wildly, kicking at the sand with my heels as I back away from the circling dogs. I swing up the tree as the first dog darts in, snapping at my ankles. Safe for a second, I remember the ship and look up. No! Its course is unchanged, my fire now hidden to them by the rocks on the beach below. With desperation, I thrust the burning branch into the leaves above me, and they explode into flame. With the howling of the dogs below me, and the furnace above already blistering the skin on my hands, I watch the ship sail slowly out of sight. I feel my grip weakening and shut my eyes against the pain. Through my eyelids, the fire appears as an all-consuming wave of blood, washing it all away. Then I'm falling, falling. 
I land hard. My eyes fly open at the sudden agony from my leg, and I look about me in wonder. The hammock I'd fallen from flaps against the bulkhead. My burned hand is bandaged, and my leg had evidently been set before I'd rebroken it just now. The pain has nothing to do with the tears that well in my eyes. Rescue. They must have removed my shoe when setting my leg. I pick it up. I throw my useless shoe at the mop and succeed in knocking it over. Leaning over, I grab the mop. I snag the thin rope. I snap the mop handle over my good knee, then, biting one end of the rope against the pane, I bind the broken shaft to my leg. Crude splint complete, I carefully stand. I wolf down the food. Beetroot soup, still warm. Mackerel and crusty bread. There's a bottle of what I take to be painkillers, though I can't read the label. I swallow two with water, no, vodka, from a tin cup, and pocket the rest. The pills leave me drowsy. I'll lie down and thank my rescuers later. I wake to voices outside the door. I can hear shouting behind the door. Another language. Russian, perhaps? Hello? Silence for a moment, then the door is shoved open. Tibet, on Boris' head. My God, thank you, thank you. A pizza, food barely. I can't believe you found me, I, I'd given up. That can evil. I catch anger in his voice, blinking away my tears. I see their faces for the first time. Faces red with rage. Do any of you speak English? My question cuts short as I'm shoved back onto my bad leg, makeshift splint shattering. I'm sick. Please, I don't understand. Shocked, I stare at the gun shaking in the man's hand. I grab the broken shaft of wood. I swipe at the pistol knocking it clear. Frozen for a moment, we all eye the gun. I dive for the gun, beating the crewman to it by a split second. Fire at the pipe, it ruptures, spewing a jet of hot exhaust. Coughing, the crewman jump backwards. I stand, feeling the bones grinding in my leg, though dulled by the strong painkillers. Sealed. I shoot out the window and clear the remaining shards with the butt of the pistol. Then, head spinning from the cocktail of pills and carbon monoxide, I plunge into the water. I hear their screams in my head. The wet thud of blade biting into flesh. The snapping of bone. I see the red wave again. Washing it all away. I open my eyes. No, not back here. My God, the passage is open. Had they gone through? Is that why they attacked me? Oh God. They must, they must have seen the old campsite. Please, no, I was free. The blood, 
The bodies. The madness I left behind there. I can't go back. But I must. The crew of that boat. I have to stop them. I crawl through the fuselage and out the severed tail of the aircraft. Those sounds I shut out, they echo in my skull again. Screaming, laughing, cutting. A man walks towards me. By his shirt, I see it's the ship's captain. Wait, stop! No, you can't be here! You monster! You killed them! I can explain. The berries! They... Shut up! I should kill you now! No! I... Please go! Before it's too... The thing lands on him, knocking him into the muck. There's a sickening crunch as the rock in its hands comes down on his head. She looks up, smiling. <laughs> Ian! You came back! Anna! Oh God! Anna, stop! No, 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 no! Can't let it rot like the rest! Come, have some! There's plenty. <laughs> I turn and vomit noisily, shutting my eyes against the sight. I should never have left them. When they'd started on the pilot. I mean, he was dead already. But still, I'd had to leave. I couldn't watch them as they... God, I should have done something. Oh, Ian, Ian. I always liked you, Ian. Come, sit with me. I have to end this. Somehow. I take aim and pull the trigger. Nothing but a wet click. The gun is empty. <laughs> you want these? Pulling something from the jacket of the captain, she holds it up. A packet of rounds. Laughing, she tosses them behind her. Come and get them! <laughs> she returns her attention to the body, and I notice the watertight packet float down to the dam. Don't think so. I take what seems to be a fragment of propeller, sharpened into a cleaver. I notice the pilot's helmet, wedged under the tail of our plane. I try, but fail to free it with my bare hands. I won't touch the vile fruit. Come back, Ian. I'd need appropriate tools to get it off. Not taking my chances with that feral thing. Prizing open cold fingers, I take the wrench. There's plenty for you. I'd need appropriate tools to get it off. I unbolt the remaining prop, a long, flat bit of hollow steel. I notice the pilot's helmet wedged under the tail of our plane. I try, but fail to free it with my bare hands. I wedge the propeller in under the helmet and push down hard, bending the prop badly in the process. The helmet comes free, and I'm greeted by the remains of the pilot's head, grinning up at me from inside. Anna, please stop! <laughs> oh, Ian, why should I stop? I feel great! Oh! To my dismay, 
I hear her howl echoed by two wild dogs. They run up to her and she tosses them some strips of flesh. Here you go. <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? Approaching, I gag on the oily smoke that bleeds out of the bonfire. Searching desperately for something I can use, I lift aside a lifeless arm. To my dismay, it comes away from the body. I crush some painkillers and brush it into the meat. I throw the horrid meat to the dog. It splashes in the water, where the dog sniffs it, then gulps it down. Diluted by the water, the painkillers have no effect. I search for another loose piece of flesh, something to distract those dogs. I'm half relieved to find no more loose parts. If I'm going to distract that dog, I'll need to... Oh, God, help me. I close my eyes and hack off a chunk of meat. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I crush some painkillers and brush it into the meat. Come on, Ian. Don't let it go to waste. not taking my chances with that feral thing. I throw the horrid meat to the dog. It sniffs it, then gulps it down. Come on. I check the rope that binds some key supports. It's secure. Short of being cut, it won't come loose. Against my better judgment, I sever the rope. The dam shifts slightly, and I hold my breath. It settles, and after a quick survey, I'm confident it'll hold, providing there's no further stress. I tie on the bent propeller, making a serviceable grappling hook. The hook catches near the top of the dam. I struggle up, blood now soaking the bandage of my burnt hand. I secure the rope to the helmet's chin strap. This could serve as a bucket if I had a well. I throw the helmet in behind the floating packet and start dragging it back towards me. I'm bringing the bucket up when I see Anna whirl around. I see what you're doing up there. She leaps cat-like up the embankment and I fall backward in surprise. Her nails sink into my leg like talons. Come back here. I jam the hideous object deep into the drain. Almost immediately I sense the pressure building behind. A terrible, surging power pushing inexorably on the wall. She pulls me upward and I feel her hands close about my throat. The wall falls silent for a moment. Then bursts. A red wave, washing it all away. <laughs>